Once scientific statements are made, a common response is, how do they know that? Sometimes there's a genuine curiosity behind the question, but often it's posed rhetorically as an objection. People can be very keen to express opinions about scientific theories they've never studied, without having made any effort to acquaint themselves with the evidence for a given theory, or even check that they've understood its basic claims, many seem to believe that their uninformed intuitions qualify them to dismiss the theory as absurd, or that because they feel that something's beyond their capacity for understanding, then it's either beyond everyone else's capacity, or it's simply impossible. Some immediately reveal a flawed understanding with objections like the Big Bang is only a theory, as though scientific theories were merely unsupported hunches or speculation. In fact, in sciences other than mathematics, the word theory denotes the most powerful status that an explanation can attain. Scientific theories are comprehensive frameworks for describing, explaining and making falsifiable predictions about related sets of phenomena, based on rigorous observation, experimentation and logic. The belief that personal intuitions are all one needs to overturn a given scientific theory often gains momentum due to an unawareness and therefore underestimation of the existing literature and evidence in that field. Scientific ideas aren't a matter of common sense, and scientific knowledge isn't something that appears sat in your lap. It requires effort. The principles behind many scientific theories can be grasped without too much difficulty when you're prepared to try and understand the explanations, whether or not you go on to accept them. But many people don't even get as far as listening to the explanations due to a pre-existing belief that whatever they are, they must be wrong. It should be immediately obvious that this approach of preemptive rejection has serious repercussions for one's ability to make accurate statements about reality. Reality doesn't mould itself around our beliefs. Our understanding must mould itself around reality, and our accuracy in describing, explaining and predicting reality depends on what we can discover through objective investigation. Someone who's genuinely interested in finding out what's true, whether or not it agrees with what they might personally like to be true, is in a good position to give an intellectually honest assessment of what's supported, not supported or refuted by evidence. Those who are more interested in confirming their own beliefs than uncovering facts that might challenge those beliefs will not make assessments that are either valid or reliable, because through the filter of personal bias, certain ideas not supported or even refuted by evidence will be declared as supported, while firmly established facts will be declared rejected. The bias that causes this flawed assessment of the facts can arise from a fear of the implications of those facts, an insecure need to be right, pressure from others, or simple misinformation, but the result is a distortion of reality. Scientists place a high priority in removing this distorting bias from their methodology by incorporating strict checks, measures and double-blind procedures because experiments contaminated by bias have no reliability or validity, and therefore no use. Similarly, the speculations of lay people whose criticisms of science are driven by personal bias contribute nothing of value to anyone's understanding. Bias due to misinformation can be straightforward to correct if the person is willing honestly to question the sources of their information. Biases bound up with emotion are more problematic. When people believe their cherished beliefs are challenged by facts, or they fear what might happen if they accept them, they're often more inclined to deny those facts than deal with the uncomfortable feelings. But if the fear of social consequences, or emotional, physical or supernatural punishment is influencing your attitudes towards science, or leaving you feeling unwilling or unable to ask questions, that should be a big sign to you that something's wrong. Discouraging people from studying science and questioning the beliefs that they've been brought up with is nothing but an attempt at social control, and facts aren't made into non-facts or vice versa by scaring people, or indeed appealing to any emotion. Fear tactics and emotional appeals are the common resort for people who have no evidence to support their assertions. Emotional methods of persuasion may be appropriate when trying to motivate people or communicate the strength of your feelings, but they're always fallacious when it comes to deciding matters of fact, because facts aren't changed by our feelings about them. Whilst a sense of passion often makes a speech more engaging, any scientist making emotional appeals for their work to be accepted, for example at a scientific conference, would be given short shrift by their peers. A speaker's emotions have no bearing on the validity of the evidence they present. And just as emotion is irrelevant when presenting evidence, going by biased personal feelings rather than objective analysis when responding to evidence is not a legitimate way to make judgments of fact. In the course of debate, the distorting effects of bias become obvious very quickly to those with an accurate knowledge of the subject, when those with a flawed understanding make error after error in their assertions, objections and reasoning. 
Arguing against a field of science you've not understood is like muscling in on a card game you've never learned. Without an understanding of the rules, you have no valid basis for adopting a strategy, or even trying to mount a convincing bluff. The person who declares evolution to be nonsense because no one's ever seen an ape mutate into a man is as conspicuously uninformed as the person who shouts snap at a poker game, though of course their own lack of comprehension prevents them from seeing it. An effective challenge to a scientific theory requires an accurate understanding of what the theory states and the kind of evidence that would refute it, followed by the production of that evidence. Of course, if you're starting out with flawed ideas about a theory, then during the process of developing an accurate understanding, you'll find that many of your prejudices about the theory, and therefore your initial grounds for rejecting it, have nothing to do with what the theory actually says. But if you're unwilling even to gain an accurate understanding, you show that you're fundamentally not serious about your position. In 1965, Gary Flandro was working as a summer intern at NASA while studying for his degree. At the time, NASA had been focusing its efforts on Mars. Scientific ingenuity hadn't propelled any spacecraft beyond its orbit. So when Gary was asked to do a calculation for a space trip to Jupiter, he suspected that he was being sidelined away from the action. But plotting the positions of the planets, Flandro discovered that in 1977, a planetary alignment that occurs only once every 176 years would allow a spacecraft, using a slingshot effect that increases the velocity of objects as they pass close to celestial bodies, to reach Neptune. Flandro's scientific curiosity and knowledge had led him to the discovery that enabled the Grand Planetary Tour by Voyagers 1 and 2, a space mission that brought us detailed information about all the giant outer planets and their major moons, transforming our understanding of our solar system and resulting in the first spacecraft to journey beyond it, carrying our physical image towards other stars. Broadening your knowledge and experience can be the most rewarding and exhilarating adventure of discovery, and today we have more potential to learn about the universe around us than at any other point in our history. But many are having their potential and opportunities for learning disrupted and sometimes destroyed by people whose fanatical desire for influence is such that they would rather obstruct science education than allow people to come to their philosophies voluntarily. Attempts to associate guilt and fear with the acquisition of knowledge are as ancient as they are familiar today. But guilt and fear don't invalidate scientific discovery or alter facts. Those who use guilt and fear to try and stigmatise established science and prevent it from being taught in schools are creating a darkness in which fear and confusion will thrive all the more. If you want to keep doors locked against aspects of reality you're unwilling or unable to deal with and remain in a restricted and unchanging zone of comprehension, that's your choice. But when you start believing that you're entitled to drag others into that zone, or that political or religious freedom means the freedom to impose your values and intellectual limitations on everyone else, you need to reassess your sense of boundaries and think carefully about the technologies and medical treatments you take for granted, which simply wouldn't exist without the science you're so ready to attack. You can't pick and choose with science. The theory of evolution is underpinned by the same scientific discipline and intellectual force that enabled engineers to send Voyager 2 to Neptune with one second accuracy and is accepted by scientists with theistic beliefs as well as scientists with none. The function of science is not to support or contradict anyone's belief or non-belief. Science is about capturing reality, and it recognises any phenomenon that's supported by the weight of evidence. Scientists welcome any genuine challenge that takes us towards a more accurate understanding of reality, and when you can present valid reliable evidence for the phenomenon you believe in, scientists will accept it. What they won't do is behave like many of those who reject evolution and the Big Bang, that is, deny a monumental body of evidence for one scenario, while expecting people to accept an alternative scenario that currently has no objective evidence behind it. When you encounter a scientific statement, ask your questions with genuine curiosity and you could learn something of value. When your opinion's in conflict with facts established scientifically by an international community working with the most sophisticated knowledge and techniques available, then either go the legitimate route and get your objective evidence recognised by peer-reviewed scientific journals, which shouldn't be a problem if your opinion is based on something more substantial than biased supposition, or leave science to those with the discipline and integrity to do what you're unwilling and or unable to do, and leave science education to those who know what they're talking about.